Valhallen is the new highest rank in Brawlhalla, and you can only get it by having both a spot at the tippity top of your region and 100 or more ranked victories. Now, I thought I had a few weeks to space this out, but apparently the season ends in... one day? Just to get a sense of things, set the mood, how, how am I looking? Jimmy, pull up the graphic. Yeah. And thus began the bender that was my speedrun to Valhalla. And what we're about to see is but a taste of the long trek upwards. Is it a tale of success? Maybe you'll be the judge of that. Within here, and I'm not exaggerating, is possibly the most ridiculous game I have ever played. 3,000 hours of Valhalla? I have never witnessed this before. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> It is now a different day. If I sound a little different, that's why. Also, I just woke up. So if I sound different throughout the video, that's that's probably going to happen. You might be wondering why I'm not recording this live. And there's a few reasons for it. Uh, number one, I, I was not in the greatest mood when I initially sat down to game. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to record. I don't want to talk. I just got back from a flight across the country the night before. I was tired. I was sleepy. It was the first day of school and it was raining. I was completely soaked and drenched and I was just uncomfortable. I don't want to even be here and so I'm just like I'm, I'm gonna play but the main reason the primary reason is I knew this was gonna be a bit of a challenge for me if you've paid attention to any of these videos or honestly the past 20 seconds I'm not the most focused guy out there not the most uh, you, you know I have a bit of brain loss so playing a bunch of games in a row I mean the main thing that I do is I play like 10 in a row also that little weapon tosses is kind of cheeky there I'm watching back some of this footage in real time with you because I'm just, you know, I'm happy to be here. Mix a casual commentary and a sprinkle of, hey, hey why did I do that little analysis? I noticed they were pretty uh, intent on wake up attacking. And so I did that little uh, combination with the ground pounds there to catch their movement. But either way, uh, part of why I got that is because they went for the double recovery earlier in the match and evading that down to, uh, so I was pretty happy with that. To get back on topic here, yeah, I'm not the guy that's on topic a lot. <laughs> that's, uh, that's part of why, and I knew if I'm playing all of these games in a row, the mental fatigue is really going to set in. Normally, if I play 10 games in one sitting, that is a lot for me. Also, tracking that outside movement, this is a rematch against the same player, that last Ember. I had a feeling because of those two gimps in the earlier match, I was like, they're probably not going to want to recover back to stage immediately. They're probably going to want to dodge out and jump out. And both of those were correct. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. Eh, I start goofing off a little bit. This is what I'm talking about. This is ranked. This is the road to Valhalla, the speed run to Valhalla, and I'm just running into everything. I, I mean, I have bad habits where I just go for goof mode, but one little sayer. <laughs> what was that? What was that? But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I got to take this out of my hand. It's a uh, ring sometimes doesn't go your way is the idea of the first part of that clip. But one small moment, one light little weapon toss can really change the pace of things. And this is a trend that you're going to see here over and over again, where I make some mistakes. I didn't know where that end light was going to send them. I kind of got stuck on the wall there. I wanted to do a combo into the ground pound and I got completely trapped. But another cute little weapon toss there to take the stock. This is a trend that has happened to me uh, throughout my entire time playing Brahalla, which is that, again, I'm not the most focused guy out there, and I kind of start goofing off in the middle of things. I get a little bored, and then I go for some dumb stuff, and I end up losing my first stock really quickly, because my head's really not in the game for a lot of these first stocks. I mean, that was just a great game, but that's not, I, I'm not even, I don't even know what to say about that. I just fell into that a little bit, and so I have to fight my way back. But yeah, this tends to happen where for some reason in the first stock of games, and I don't know if I'm alone here. I, I'm definitely not. I'm sure there's a lot of y'all too. Also, check this out. That's insane. This is Tesco just destroyed me. I've never seen that before. Then again, the character's new, so yeah, it makes sense, but uh, I like this little combination there. And then I do a bit of an oopsie goofy. You can see right there, barely avoiding the ground pound. And luckily, uh, even though mine misses, they do a bit of an SD there too. But this is what I'm talking about. This game right here. This is probably, I don't know, 10, 20 games in. I'm already kind of spent, and I'm just, I, I miss the dare. I miss my dodge. I miss my recovery. I mash jump, and my first stock is already gone. There's a lot of games like this. I'm not including all of them, where I immediately SD my first stock. And so that puts you in a weird spot where you have to make a comeback. I eventually got the first one here, but I'm still a giant damage lead behind. So I got to pull something out. Luckily, I get that game. 
Even if they don't head bonk there, the weapon toss connects, I'm able to continue the edge guard. Uh, and from here, this is a little bit of battle boots being crazy, because all I do is hit that GC downlight in the yellow, and they're gone. And this is the game. This is the game that I was talking about earlier. It starts off great. You know, everything's going nice. I get some early damage, it's an edge guard situation. And then once again, very carelessly, I lose my first stock. But okay, I've been there before. As I was just saying, I've SD'd the first stock in many of these games. I'm forced to make a comeback, but not like this. I miss that Sare. It would. I, what am I? Okay, you don't have to. You don't have to show it again. Yeah. Now I'm really far behind, and I'm starting to panic. You can tell I'm taking a billion damage. I miss that recovery. I'm missing a lot of recoveries. That ground pound almost killed me. I'm basically desperate for this kill. That one doesn't even get it. Finally, I get the KO. I am not only a full stock behind not only do i need a gimp to even this up a gimp mind you that i just got gimped twice off stage so going for this pretty risky because they had shown a tendency here gc ensign here they're recovering very low if i don't weapon toss there they definitely gc ensign me not only do i need a gimp but i'm also really far behind in damage and i've been losing in neutral the entire game i mean you saw how many times i got hit it went by kind of fast if I got hit with one more gun sidelight, I'm done. Like, that break dance just kills me. So I'm stressed out. I have to win so many games. I've already, I'm already in so many games. I, I, I gotta get my focus up. This is, this is down to the wire. That stair kills me. That downlight kills me. That sidelight sets me up for the kill. That end light sets me up for the kill. They're gonna go for a recovery. I know they're going for a recovery. Wait it out. I get a recovery. That's a kill. That's a kill. That one barely missed. And then they went for an end save. They went for the one thing that had changed the pace of the match. And that's a comeback. That's a pretty good comeback from a situation that was grim. But did you catch that? Because I got zero elo for that game. Zero! It, it did nothing! It, that was, it, it did nothing! I fought back from that whole situation for what? And so now I'm, I'm like, what am I even doing here? I need a hundred wins. I need to be top 50 in ELO. And I did all of that for nothing. I have literally never seen that before. I've never gotten a zero ELO game. Maybe it's something to do with the way that ranked is changing there. I, I got a bit of a, I think I got a, I got a bit gimped again. You can see that my offstage play is it's kind of suffering in this, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play fast. I gotta do something. I mean, I, I've only got a day. And I didn't miss. And that was a big game changer. <laughs> what, am I, what am I changing my jeans, my jorts? It was a big game changer. Because if you remember, I, I, I missed the Sair pretty badly on that GCN sig against the Knicks. And so if I missed that one and died within 20 seconds, twice in a row to the Tezka N sig, or I guess the Chell N sig, that was unfortunate. I, I really thought that might work. Again, you can see right here, not, not the greatest gamer around. Doing a bit of doing a bit of goofing off there, trying to go for a big old gim. It was actually really good from the from the Val to avoid. <laughs> I didn't go for Grandpa there uh, to avoid by jumping outward. The the second stair that was pretty that was, that was pretty nice. I like that a lot. That kind of movement. I gotta copy that for myself. Uh, I lost my train of thought already. I guess going for that stair gave me the confidence because. I had missed that so badly. That Knicks game was really down to the wire. I mean, I was literally one Sarah away from dying for so long, and uh, and my spacing wasn't the best. Okay, when I say goofing off, that's actually the wrong word. I think the word is just goofing because I am a bit I'm a, I'm a bit of a goofball, and maybe I should let myself uh, give myself some credit here that even though, despite all that, I still was able to maintain a level of focus, enough to play a certain amount of games. You can see right there, I was baiting out the jump, able to get two kills in a row from knocking into the corner on Demon Island, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, and this is a rematch. Once again, they're on the Lin Fei now. I actually almost wall slipped there. That Psylite would have just straight up killed me. Uh, but I really like this combination coming up with the Battle Boots where I'm able to bait out a dodge. From that last game, I was kind of get, get able to get a sense of how they played. Jeez, this... It's a very uh, offbeat commentary. I thought this would be fun because it's like the first of the new year. I'm just watching it live alongside you, but, but maybe I should edit this. Uh, no, probably not. Not gonna do that. Don't have the time. School started once again. And that clip is just a demonstration of showing you how different matchups can really affect how you play, what you're going for. Because I know this is Nye. This is a low speed character. That didn't kill, which is unfortunate. That's also Nye, high defense character. Uh, you're able to push her off stage 
use the movement of the battle boots there. You actually have more force if you're not using uh, the active input version, and especially with this upcoming patch, it's going to be way more dramatic there. There, I noticed they dodge in, uh, but the idea, and taking advantage of that dodge in, is that because Queen Nye is slow, I'm just going to carry her along the map, and she's going to have to use a bunch of options to come all the way back, uh, and in doing so, I'm able to get the KO early. Once again, reading the dodge in combination on the ledge there, and then I, like, like, what? Yeah, okay. This is the problem. This is this is the problem. You could see I lost two stocks just like going for only Nair. So I do the dumbest thing alive and I do a down and it works out somehow. Because sometimes the game is very nice to me. I get hit with two of these combinations in a row, so this time I dodge through, which I probably shouldn't have done. I could eat a lot of damage from Katars, but yeah, this is really this is really a test for me, and I'm, and I'm glad I kind of went through with this challenge to try and get Fall Hall. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes uh, by the end of it. That is a little a little bit of a foreshadowing taste for the end result there, baiting out that dodge, and once again, going for some extended strings. I do really like going for these ground pounds on stage. Uh, it's working out quite nice. I went for that end sig because I knew I would land on the stage. Uh, here's some nice movement to avoid the guns. And uh, and I was able to get a bit of a combination after that, which is which is pretty cool. I am proud of myself because this is really not something that I would usually do, baiting out the movement with my dodge there, tracking where they're going to be, able to get that nice little quickie game. Uh, now against an Onyx, and this player in particular, is uh, the games tend to extend a little bit longer, which is not the best thing because again, this is all really a battle of time. Getting 100 wins is something that I think, I mean, unless you have a 0% win rate, it's just going to happen if you play more games. I am the type of person that in ranked, I, there's seasons where I have like nine games total, so this is definitely a, a bit of a challenge for me. And especially doing all of this in one sitting, like I mentioned at the start, and like I'm kind of hammering home, maybe a bit much here, but I, I really do think it's a, it's a pretty big deal for me. I, I don't, I'm not a, a one session grinder, to say the very least. I get bored very, very, very quickly. Unfortunately, this doesn't KO. Kaya is uh, quite the defense character. Also, high speed. It's very difficult to deal with. Did not catch that spot dodge there quite yet, but able to get a bit of a combination here that I, I thought was pretty neat, especially on a very early uh, Battle Boots experience here. I, I believe I'm about level 18 or 19, but as you can see, the last stock slips away, and now it's a one-hit game. A rollback on that recovery, unfortunately. I get hit by one more recovery. I get hit by a Sair. I get hit by a Downlight. I am completely dead. And I misinputted. <laughs> okay, that was, that was a bit, uh, we can admit this, that was a bit of a misinput. I, I meant to go for a dash jump recovery. It did work out. And now jumping ahead. I, I think this is probably the next game. I've done a bit of jump in there, but this is the same Tesca that gimped me with that recovery, or that GC recovery, GC NSIG earlier. And uh, I was able to avoid it. I know that it's not going to be a true combo. You can just fast fall out of that. You can also jump, I believe. I haven't done any testing or anything like that, but uh, I was able to take advantage of that. I was trying to bait them to do it earlier in the stock because I knew you know, they're probably going to go for it. And uh, I'm glad it worked out. All I got to do was avoid a wee bit. Unfortunately, missing that, but a quick combination here should take the stock at the very ledge. Yeah, this is the 95th game. So the jumping, jumping around quite a lot. Uh, in one session, but I am gonna end up playing this Tezka a lot. What you're not seeing is that in between all of these games is like six minutes of cues, like almost every time, and here once again, I'm able to avoid that with a dodge. I, I do a bit of an SD, but that's two games in a row where this Tezka player uh, SDs off of that GC NSIG, which typically is a very advantageous position, which I think uh, is pretty nice there. I do a bit of a dodge there. It's, it was a bit antsy, I will say. Uh, and I do think that that helps me out a lot. I do think that that's the reason why they SD'd right there. Because being off stage and then dying twice off of an advantageous position can kind of hurt your confidence a little bit. Clearly, it doesn't hurt their confidence on stage because I get absolutely destroyed in this very next game. And it continues. It continues into the next stock too. Once again, the first stocks of a lot of these games are not going my way. And this is 100% because I'm getting outplayed. I play a bit patient. I notice, okay, when are they going to dodge? When are they going to dash back? And I got a bit of a read there, was able to take that stock and fighting back a little bit, getting some combinations, a bit of damage with the battle boots, which don't really do that much damage on their own. Uh, luckily, even though I get knocked out right here, I'm gonna be able to turn the tides. You can see they're in the orange already. So I fought back from a situation where I was one full stock and in the orange down, uh, to now it's just about half a stock. So this is something that I really think I need to improve on in the future, is playing 
every stock like it's my last stock. And right there, you can see the Battle Boots recovery, which hurt me earlier. I, I SD'd a bunch. I died off stage earlier than I would have, especially against that Tesca on uh, on Miami Dome. It is something to note about that Battle Boots recovery. It helped me out there. And now this is a game where I feel pretty confident. I feel pretty good with my gauntlets on stage. Also this damage matchup where even if we trade hits one for one, I'm just going to win because gauntlets do that much more damage. Able to get that GC Entig and turn that game around. From the beginning, it was looking pretty terrible. I mean, I was just getting hit for hit for hit for hit unanswered. And this is something really to remember is that the games are not over when you're down and they're especially not over when you're looking like you're almost out, like against that Nyx. And although you get zero elo, maybe it doesn't matter at all. I guess if I lost, I probably would have lost like 32, right? I don't know how that works. But some offstage confidence there. I'm feeling good after that last game where I brought it back after losing a bunch on stage, and especially in these past few where I was able to get a big advantage off stage. Once again here, I'm doing a bit of, I don't, I don't, I don't know what happens. And I, and I rush there for sure. I start getting really antsy and, and they took full advantage of it. However, yeah, I built up a lot of damage. So I knew that one was gonna be uh, quite, quite good. And if you're keeping count, this is my 99th win game. This is the next match against this very same shell, the very same uh, Tezka or Chell, uh, I'm not entirely sure. So one more rematch after this one, and, and that's it. I don't, e I don't even have to win this one, and then the next one back to back. It just has to be, I have to win the best of three. And that's it, the 99th win. Here, it's a bit of a goof. Uh, I had a feeling they weren't gonna insta-jump because they've been using that NSIG a lot offstage. It ended up, I probably could have gone for that ground pound, but, but that's all right. And I feel great about this situation, this position. I've gained, gained some of my confidence back. I see the finish line, so I've got a bit of rejuvenated energy. I'm lying. What am I talking about? What am, wh why, why would I say anything like that? Of course I still SD on the 99th game to Valhalla. Because I must do it again. I mean, I literally almost just did it again. And, and that's the way things go sometimes. Unfortunately... They were done with that series, which is, you know, which is fine. Don't, uh, don't, don't make fun of anyone for disconnecting or anything like that. We've all had our, had our bad days and, and maybe they were just uh, not feeling it in the moment. And this is uh, unfortunately not the best start to the final 100th game. As I'm sure you know, if you've watched any of my ranked videos in the past, the first and last games for some reason are always so sloppy. It's definitely a mental thing because I'm like, oh, the video is going to end soon. It doesn't even matter if it's a milestone. Uh, and for me, knowing in the back of my head, yeah, this is probably going to end up being a video that I'll make, maybe a post commentary or something like that, maybe a montage, I'm not sure. I get, I get a bit antsy. And despite, I, I feel like doing a pretty good job using the platform to reset for that kill. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not going great. It's not going great. I miss that Sare. I get hit by that. I, I, I nair there. And then instead of hitting them back, I decide to dodge up because I'm like, oh, now I can get some distance upward and I can get the ground pound and I get a bit of a reset. Uh, yeah, I am uh, I am pretty far behind and this is a rough position. This is not the greatest But I have been here before and despite them using a lot of lance moves that I don't feel the most confident in punishing once again because battle boots are quite new and I'm not the most experienced with them at the very least <laughs> It's unfortunate. I had to burp right at the very end there. I, uh, I, I get a bit of a kill there and once again, they're using a lot of Lance moves and I'm not over committing. This is something that I think can hurt people a lot, especially against the Lance is they move a lot. And so what you think you have to do in order to punish it is like, oh, all I have to do is just hit where they're going. But because of the aerial drift, oftentimes it's unpunishable. And I knew in a couple of those situations with unarmed, I was not ready to punish. So instead of going for it and potentially, I still didn't kill, it was so close. But I, I, I can do some damage. I can do some damage. That kills me. Okay, basically, I, just, I have to hone in my ooh, ooh, monkey brain instincts because they're. they're, they're, they're and I was able to squeak out the win. I got Valhallen for the very first time by sitting down and doing what I never do, which is actually play the game. So there it is, that was the quick recap of my speedrun to Valhalla. This is a one-take commentary if it isn't very obvious. Let me know if you want to see more of these, this is actually pretty fun.